Hi, I'm Mike from Eco Solar. So here I am, stopping mid construction. Wanted to show you a flat roof system. Dawned on me about eight years ago. I used to use a different style product, used wood, insufficient building materials, didn't like how it all went together. I searched for the solution and I found Hot Sun on the internet. I reached out to Ken Wright, the owner. He explained to me the right way to do it. And it's right here in front of you. Ballasted flat roof system, no penetrations. All building materials that are meant to be outdoors, nothing that's gonna rot and fall apart in a few years. Hi, I'm Ken Wright from Hot Sun. Flat roofs are one of our specialties. All of our systems can be custom fitted to the roof space. That's important because available space is often the limiting factor. Flat roofs are great for solar because it isn't visible from the ground. And the flat roof naturally limits the cooling effect of the wind, meaning we get better performance than if our collectors are sitting up on a rack facing the sun more directly. We've done many municipal pool installations because big pools usually have great big roofs. This is our largest one to date, 8,000 square feet. It heats the hot water and the pool. It's the largest system in Canada by a factor of two. There really is no other proper engineered solution for solar pool heating on a flat roof. It's important on a flat roof to protect the roof. We don't want to interfere or penetrate the roof in any way. Our ballasted system uses a framework of locally available chain link fence top rail, unistrut, and patio stones. Pretty much everything else is supplied by Hot Sun, including design and layout specifications. Don't forget to read the general installation instructions, the manual addendum, and the drawing. You can take the drawing on the roof with you. We can prefab the solar panels for you in fixed lengths, or you can custom fit them to the roof by building them on the roof to fit the roof. Let's see how Mike puts together a prefabbed manifold assembly. Okay, so uh, we laid out our two unit struts parallel to each other for the staggered assembly that you see here. And they are the offset a T and a 90. Basically, we want this gap right here to be wide enough to allow these two fittings to easily mate. See here we've done some back and forth. It's an intermediate pipe right here that is built to nine and three eighths inches long piece of pipe with an inch and a half coupling. Allows us to do a staggered setup where the panels have no gap in them. Two inch slip collar with a number 44 hose clamp around. See, we've got a pre-made panel here. And we'll take you through the process. Lay it up. Use your PVC cement. Go inside your female side first. Do your male next. Make sure you encompass the entire surface with glue. Let's not get any leak. Take your panel, glue it in place, and you clock the nipples all the same direction so you don't have them facing different directions. Headers in place. Next, we'll glue another intermediate pipe. Here's our intermediate pipe once again. Our two inch slip collar and number 44 hose clamp. Slide that together, lock it on once it's glued. Once again, glue our female side first, our male side. Sometimes you get a little drippage. Again, make sure your slip collar is on. Slide it in and bottom the fitting out. Slip collar in the middle. Number 44 hose clamp. As you put the gear clamp on the back side, and we clock that down. that allows is for this pigtail to not interfere with the next panel that overlaps, where there's no risk for this chafing. It's nice and smooth. We have the end of the last intermediate pipe here. This one already installed, clamped and done. We're going to take our next one and lay it in place. It's a prefabricated 22 foot long panel, both headers attached. Next, take our panel. We're not going to pay attention to the obstruction right now. We're going to split between the two. And we're going to roll this out. Now 
of this rolled out, we'll slide the fin tube up against each other. At the end, we line all these up and fix them down with an adhesive. Now I want to show you how to split this. Take our panel where it's going to line out straight, and we see that it's generally right in the middle. We've got three tubes on each side. And we're going to split right down the middle. And we're going to split that over top of the vent. Don't forget the glue strip before you lay the panels down. It's a gun. Five sixteenths is the size of the screw. Come down closer. I'm going to show you something. Stainless steel hose clamps, uh, the cheaper ones have kind of a non-stainless steel screw. But the ones we're using, the ones we get now, are um, all 3 16 stainless steel, including the screw. The number 44 for there, not too tight. It's got to allow it to move still. Allows it to move with temperature, right? Have them here and here and here and here. Everywhere. Hold it all down, glue this to the blocks with construction mastic later. Okay. Our grid is based on a 10 foot by 10 foot grid. So we have 10 manifold, 10 sections, which is what this bank is. And then crossbars every 10 feet. Number 20 hose clamps and one inch rigid pipe, two hole or one hole clamps, two inch stubs of pipe, two inch pipe over inch and a half pipe, allow the inch and a half pipe to change length with temperature freely. Same thing we do here. Number 44 hose clamp around the two inch collar allows it to move freely with temperature. The manifolds sit on Unistrut, which sits on patio stones. The, the Unistrut is glued to the patio stones as the final step. And this whole frame is part of the engineered assembly. Alright, so we've done that end. It's all secured in place, you see over there. We've got it all straightened out. And now, here's our Unistrut Unistrut assembly here, and we can use it as a guide. So we're going to put a, two chalk lines where we're going to make our cuts. Here's one, and here's the other. I thought I was going to need your help for this, but I can use the Unistrut. do is we cut the outer ones first, put the headers on, and then cut the inner ones and put the headers on. So we're going to cut, it doesn't really matter which ones are the outers, so let's call this the outer. We're going to cut that one. If we cut the outside ones first, then we can't make a mistake. Three, those would be the inside, this would be the outside. how the cutters push them in and never move them. Three inside, outside. Push them in all the way and don't move because you don't want to nick the fin tubes. So now we put these three headers on, flip these out of the way, and then we cut these. That's key because we don't want to make a mistake. Okay, so we've done those three. We flip them out of the way, and then we cut our inside line. And there's no risk we're going to cut the wrong tube this way. I'm going to go ahead and nick them all. It's not a race. You don't have to hurry. It's not a race. Getting all the glue off of that 
dauber full, make sure it was fully submerged. Look for any dry spots. Looks good. Nice time to be doing it when the heat of the, heat of the sun is off of us. We're in the evening now. It's easier when the fin tubes are softer when they're hotter. But if they're too hot, you can't even touch them and then they're too flimsy. Okay. All right. Thank you. Chain link fence top rail. You just cut it with a hacksaw. Be careful. Don't hurt yourself. File the end. File it. And then spray it with zinc paint. Galvacon is the old standard. Uh, you can buy zinc paint at Home Depot now. In a spray can. There goes. Okay. Easy. Okay, hi. That's our frame. Remember that? We did that. Straight. Two and a half inches. Good. Oh. Okay. Primering everything up. Remember, we don't use primer here. We only use it on PVC to PVC because the manifolds are made of styrene and it reacts strongly with PVC cement. So you don't need the primer. The primer's too much. Now we want to rotate this, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this on here. Get our rotation. Rotate it up again. Then we'll glue this one. How do I know it's going to go? Just know. Okay, our angles look good. So I like to paint with a small roller because you can get under the pipe, see? You do this before you secure everything down, obviously. Do things in the right order. Never walk backwards on a roof. Just look where you're going. put drain points everywhere so we can get the water out. We only have to worry about the water in the rigid piping. We don't have to worry about the water in the flexible fin tubes. It can freeze solid. Oh, no, no. 